Hello friends, and happy Monday! I've been promising a video tour of my craft room for ages, and I'm so excited to finally share a look into my happy space with you today. After looking at all the videos and photos I took to prepare for this tour, I decided it would probably be best to split it into a few different parts, so today we're going to focus on my main desk area and everything I can reach from my chair. In two weeks, I'll finish up the tour with the other half of the room. I also have a few fantastic giveaways and exclusive discount codes from two of my favorite organizational companies, Organize More and Lots of Style, so make sure to watch to the end for all those details. I think sometimes it looks different in photos, but as you can see, my craft room isn't huge, but I've taken a lot of care in packing almost every available inch of space. It's about 10 by 10, so I've had to be very thoughtful about how I store and keep my supplies, and also occasionally be ruthless when I need to de-stash and clean out unused supplies and products. I'm going to get a little Marie Kondo here, but I try to ask two questions in my mind when organizing and designing my craft room. Is it functional for my habits, and does it bring me joy to look at? So as we go through my room, you'll see that there's a pretty even balance of functional organization and things that just make me smile. I love supporting other artists and crafters and decorate my rooms with their beautiful artwork as much as possible. I also love bright colors and love using my organization to keep my room cheerful and vibrant. So that being said, welcome to my craft room and let's get started. I work from home as both a crafter and a music teacher and I haven't ever had the opportunity to work in a typical office space. That being said, when I was designing my craft room, I kind of liked the idea of giving myself like an office work cubby where I could sit in my rolling chair and have all of my most used items within arm's reach. I removed my chair from the room before filming just so it would be easier to see everything, but I have a nice cushy rolling chair from Amazon that is perfect for long days at my desk. Speaking of, I will link as many supplies and products as I can in the YouTube description below, but I'll have a full list over on my blog. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or on my blog, and I'll do my best to help you find the item. Like many crafters, most of my furniture is from Ikea, and I really love the clean lines and bright white look to their products. My main working desk is comprised of two Alex 5 drawer bases, two Linman tabletops, and a few table legs. I screwed brackets into the Linman tables to join them together in an L shape, and then used command strips to attach the tabletops to the alec bases for a little extra stability. Finally, I have table legs holding up the tabletops in the four corners not held up by the alec bases. Directly in front of me is a large 24 by 36 cutting mat that's perfect for filming video tutorials. I also have a Tim Holtz glass mat that I tend to keep on my desk as well. I have a few bins from Ikea that I use to store current design team and guest commitments, and then an empty bin that stores products as I work with them, and gives me a handy way to contain things before they get filed back into my storage systems. You'll see that teal cardstock used throughout my room for organization, and it's paper tray ink Hawaiian Shores. I like having a cohesive color used throughout the room. I simply laminated the dividers and added a label for the company so that I could keep new releases organized. I also keep a little container from Ikea that holds Copic markers or other markers and mediums as I'm using them so they're not all over my desk. My most used tools are in a fantastic organizer from Lots of Style. It was intended for makeup storage, but I think it's perfect for a craft desk. It has lots of little openings of various sizes that hold different tools, as well as two little drawers perfect for hiding my purple tape from a curious kitten. On the top of the storage unit, there's a little space that's perfect for holding a post-it pad or something like that. I decided to do something a little different and trimmed one of my magnetic die stored sheets to fit the space and then cut a piece of white cardstock to fit over it just to keep it pretty. I used a corner chomper to cut the edges and now I have a perfect place to store dies while I'm making a card without any worry of losing them. I recently picked up the bartender magnetic tray from Trinity Stamps that sits up there as well and I love that I can move that around while I'm working and also still have my magnetic space on the organizer. I also keep a few cute bowls I've gotten over the years to hold stamped or die-cut images, embellishments, etc. as I'm working. I have a small collection of bowls and rotate them every few months just to change up the look of my desk. Finally, I keep baby wipes in a reusable container and use a mail sorter to hold my mini Misty, regular Misty, and scoring board. My friend Rowena gave me the Mini Misty holder a few years ago, 
and I keep the Misty Creative Corners, extra laminated grid sheets, and a small printed Copic hex chart in the pocket. To my right, I keep a small Sizzix sidekick which is perfect for die cutting tiny images and sentiments. On the left side of my desk is my rotor trim, 12 inch trimmer, and my heat gun. I love that the trimmer has a lip on the edge that's perfect for holding my heat gun securely so I don't have to worry about the heat gun accidentally falling off my desk. In the winter, I also have a beverage warmer plugged in to keep my coffee or cider hot all day. There's also dog treats because of course Gambit always deserves a treat. I also have a long ceramic tray that's technically meant for canapes, but it's bright white and perfect for using to mix colors as a watercolor palette. The little whale on top is a chopstick holder, but holds my paintbrushes while I'm working to keep them from rolling off the desk. Like my colorful bowls, I also have a few chopstick holders I rotate through occasionally just because they make me happy. Against the wall are two custom organizers from Organize More. I've had these organizers for well over five years now and I just adore them. They each hold 80 ink pads, and as you can see, they also store refills right next to the pad. I keep all of my distress inks, distress oxides, and reactive inks in the unit, as well as my most commonly used regular ink pads, Copic friendly black inks, snow line inks, embossing inks, white pigment, etc. All of my inks are labeled on all four sides, and I have little swatch dots on the labels. This is helpful to see when I'm reaching for colors, and I have them on all four sides because really, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and honestly, I just like to see the way it looks. I also printed labels from Ranger's website on sticker paper, punched them with a 3 quarter inch circle punch, and adhered them to the bottom of the re-inker so it's easy to see where the ink pads go when I'm putting them away. Above those, I have a smaller ink holder from Organize More that holds my Concord and Ninth inks and my stamp marking inks. I also have a few little trees I die cut from Concord 9th cardstock last month that create the perfect happy little forest for my prized Bob Ross Funko and his cute raccoon. On the other side of that organizer, I have a colored pencil holder from Organize More that I use for my good paintbrushes so that the tips are protected and they're also far away from my cats. Then I have a coffee mug I bought in Monterey, California a few years ago that stores my larger paintbrushes and a stash of white colored pencils and blender pencils. On that wall, I have a variety of art pieces from some of my favorite artists on Etsy and Instagram. The watercolor portraits were custom commissions of our last two Shelties and Rogue. My husband has two more downstairs in his office. And then I have a collection of embroidery hoops from different artists, custom needle felted paintings of Merlin and Archimedes, and then some of my favorite things, Outlander, Seals and Otters, Foxes, Rabbits, Bougainvillea, Poppies, and Ocean Sunsets. Above that is a garland made from fabric scraps and white teal and coral that I made years ago for my first craft room, which was downstairs in our house. Further along that wall, I have a display holder that's meant for photographs, but is perfect for displaying happy mail from some of my favorite card makers and friends. I rotate some of the pieces occasionally, but some of these cards and the people who made them are very dear to my heart, and seeing them on my wall just brings a smile to my face every day. Finally, I have two framed pieces of art from the fabulous and incomparable Kathy Rack and Don Wolfslagel. Okay, back to my desk. Like I said earlier, I find functional space wherever I can. So below my desk and off to the side where they can't be easily seen, I store paper towel and baby wipe refills and my splatter boxes. I also have a command hook under my desk that holds my cardstock swatches so that I can easily reach them but they're not on my desk where they'd be likely to get ink splattered or bent. On my right IKEA Alex drawers, I keep the items I reach for most as those are the drawers I can pull out the easiest without needing to shift my chair too much. In the top drawer, I store my most reached Ford embossing powders that I've transferred into Systema containers. These include white, clear, and black embossing powders from Hero Arts. Also, my favorite gold and silver tinsel and glitter powders, holographic sparkle powder, and basic gold and silver metallic powders. I also store the rest of my Hero Arts embossing powders, a few backup refills, and my powder bags here. And a quick side note, if this is your first time visiting my channel, you'll notice that I have a lot of products. You really don't need this much to create, but I work for several companies and part of my job is helping to test, use, and promote their products. I also spent many years carefully saving up and slowly buying my favorite mediums and tools so that I have access to what I really enjoy using. But please don't ever feel like you need this many mediums or products to create what you love. 
Moving along. Next, I have two mini ink trays from Organize More that hold my Distress Ink Minis and my Pink Fresh Layering Inks. I used to do quite a bit more traveling and going to classes where it was helpful to have mini Distress Inks, so I purchased the set in addition to the full-size inks. I don't do as much traveling anymore, but I do find that sometimes it's helpful to have a smaller sized pad when doing things like ink smushing, so I've kept both sets. A few years ago, I found a great sale on Distress Ink Refills, so I also keep a few extras in there. The next two drawers hold my blending tools and sprays. Again, a few years ago, I found a great sale on Distress products from a shop going out of business and really stocked up. Because I use Distress products on almost every card I create, I decided to invest in a tool for each color, which really works best for me. To help me differentiate the tools, I painted the handles of my oxide tools a light gray to match the ink pads. Then I printed labels from Ranger onto sticker paper, used a 3 quarter inch punch to punch them out, and adhered them to the top of each tool. I used to store my tools in a different holder where I could see the side of the tool and not the top, which is why some of my tools are labeled along the sides as well. My ink tools are stored in nail polish holders. Each nail polish holder holds 15 tools, and I can easily fit four per drawer with a little room to spare. I trimmed cheap cardstock into squares to sit at the bottom of each compartment to soak up the excess ink on my tools, and I usually change these out once a year or so as they start to break down. I also printed a second label on sticker paper and attached them to the back of each compartment so I know where the tools go if I take a bunch out to use at once. I use the same order for my tools that I use for my ink pads, so over the years I've mostly memorized where each tool goes, but it's still helpful to have them labeled in case a friend is over using my supplies. I use the curved blending foams from scrapbook.com for my oxides now, which is why my tools don't sit straight up and down, but I haven't found it to be a problem. Around the edges of my blending tool holders, I store all of my favorite sprays and spray refills. I printed out labels with the names of the sprays on sticker paper and stuck them to the cap so they'd be easy to identify. And finally, the bottom drawer on that side is a bit of a catch-all. It holds my spare heat gun, shaker pouches, punches, googly eyes, my brayer, things like that. It's not quite organized, but it's also stuff I don't reach for very often. But are the kinds of things that I've learned to keep together in one space because they're the things that don't really fit anywhere else and I tend to lose them otherwise. On the left side, my top drawer holds a stack of copy paper I use for things like scribbling sketches or funneling embellishments or blending backgrounds. I recycle the paper whenever possible, and this way, a ream of copy paper lasts me a really long time. The drawer also holds my rulers, a color wheel, post-it notes and post-it pads. I also keep a few personal items like lotion and chapstick in here so they're easy to access. The next drawer is kind of one of those secret places of shame. I will admit I hoard sparkly pretty things like a magpie, and this drawer is definitely evidence of that. I have a variety of embossing powders, embossing glitters, mica flakes, crystal flakes, and loose glitter that I almost never use anymore but just can't bear to part with. Most have been swatched and the swatches are on top of the caps, but some are simply stored upside down so I can see the jar contents. Really, I need to sort through these someday and give away the ones I don't use anymore, but they're just so pretty to look at. My next drawer houses all of my acrylic blocks, coffee filters for embossing powder or glitter, and cleaning supplies. Below that are all of my adhesives, liquid glues, tape runners, and adhesive tape. I also keep my painter's tape and purple tape in there for watercoloring. Finally, my bottom drawer holds ink daubers, my Concord 9th ink refills, a few oversized glue refills, and some of my craft tool and appliance manuals. If we turn my chair to the left, I have a trash can where I can easily sweep my trimmer waste directly into the can. And there's just enough space to the side of the trash can where I store my hardboards for watercoloring. Like I said, I use every available inch of space. And because trash cans aren't inherently pretty, I have a few of my favorite crafty stickers adhered to the furniture around the can that brighten up the space. Directly behind me I have an IKEA Raskog rolling cart that is basically where I store the rest of my mediums. On top I have an organizer that holds all of my Copic sketch markers. I also store my Wendy Vecchi station and laminated hex charts from Sandy Alnock for all of my markers and colored pencils. On the second shelf I keep all of my watercolor palettes, chamois towels, 
and watercolor cups. I have my Magello Mission Gold, Daniel Smith, Gonzai Tambi Metallics, and watercolor pencils on the shelf. I have pencil cases that hold my Prismacolor, Polychromos, and Luminance pencils, and then a few different bins and cases that hold my Altenew alcohol markers and watercolor markers, and my Zig watercolor brush markers. I have a large pegboard on the back wall that holds a variety of supplies. On top is a shelf that holds my embellishments, Chibitronic supplies, fuse tool, bulk refills of my most used sequins, and stamped and colored images. I also have a large acrylic storage unit that is designed to hold nail polish bottles at a salon, but is perfect for my bottles of drops and liquid watercolors. I used to have a second unit that held all of my alcohol inks, but that's been moved into another room. So for the moment, I have my thread and twine holder on the pegboard, which is great for access, but a little too easy to access for the cats, so I might have to relocate that soon. Finally, in the corner I have a 2x2 Calyx unit. On top I keep my electric die cutting machine, my Xyron sticker maker, snacks because chocolate is a must have, and a stair step shelf unit from Organize More that holds my Distress Oxide sprays, Altenew sprays, color burst powders, extra nouveau drops, stamp market ink refills, and alcohol ink lift off pads and refills. In the top left cubby, I store my labeling supplies and storage pockets. I also use a magazine holder to store a package of Paper Tray Ink Hawaiian Shorts cardstock and Stamper Select White cardstock. Those are the cardstocks I use for all of my labeling and organization, so it's helpful to have them nearby. In the top right cubby, I have a fridge bins with pre-cut cardstock of my most often used cardstocks and papers. In the bottom left cubby, I keep my Copic airbrush supplies, extra cutting plates for my die cutting machine, a Tim Holtz stamp platform, and a few adhesive sprays and glitter sprays. In the bottom right cubby, I store all of my watercolor pads, sticky adhesive sheets, and masking paper. Above that, I have two shelving units that hold a mix of functional and decorative items. I keep my Dr. P.H. Martin's liquid watercolors up there where they're safely out of cat reach since they're glass bottles. And then I have a few of my favorite wood-mounted stamps from Hero Arts and Bossy Jossie, another Bob Ross Funko, some Craft Fair felted finds, my letter board, and a few fun crafty signs. And finally, above my pegboard, I have art from a few more of my favorite makers. I have a chunky rainbow painting from Josie Lewis Art, an acrylic painting from Sarah Cooey Art, string art from Honaker Home and Shari Moss, and hand-painted signs from Stephanie Clock and Just Add Sunshine. And that's it for one jam-packed side of my craft room. I hope you've enjoyed a look at my creative space, and it gives you some ideas for your own craft room. And just in case you're working on reorganizing your space, and to thank you for watching this super long video, I've got two fantastic giveaways and discount codes for you. Organize More has generously given me a $75 gift certificate to give away to one of my viewers, and a 10% discount on their whole shop through the month of August with the code SPARKLE10. Lots of Style is giving away one of the cute makeup organizers I use on my desk and is also offering a generous 30% discount on this specific organizer to all of my viewers through the month of August with the code 30Jessica30. You can find links to both shops in the YouTube description below or over on my blog. For a chance to win the gift certificate or the organizer, like this video, comment with your favorite craft room product, and subscribe to my channel. You can also share this video for an extra chance to win. Please comment below if you share it and let me know where you shared it. Winners will be announced during the next tour video so that you have time to use the discount codes before the end of the month. Again, I've tried to link all the major products I use and love below with a full list over on my blog, but if there's something I've missed, please leave a comment below and I'll try to source it for you. Thank you so much for watching, have an amazing day, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!